Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at NXP with Ravi Shah, who's going to talk today about USB Type-C, which is the new USB standard. Ravi, Type-C is a brand new standard that's out there. What do engineers have to know when they're designing systems with this stuff? So, great question. Um, so, USB Type-C connector is the next-gen connector uh, promoted by the USB-IF. Um, you know, we all are familiar with uh, you know, the USB connector. It's probably the most ubiquitous connector used out there on any kind of device uh, we know. So, the new Type-C connector allows video, data, and power delivery, which means charging over the same connector and cable. And this is very unique about USB Type-C, which opens up uh, you know, a whole world of possibilities uh, and ecosystems. And one of the advantages of this connector as well is that you can plug it in in any direction, right? Correct. So, the connector is very small form factor. It is uh, flippable, which means it is independent of cable direction and orientation, which greatly increases the ease of use. And it is it can support high USB bandwidth, you know, USB 3.1 Gen 1, which is 5 gigabit per second, and it is scalable to much higher bandwidth. You know, the next impending node, uh, USB 3.1 Gen 2, which is 10 gigabit per second. So what's different in the pinout on the USB Type-C versus the 2.0? So USB Type-C has, USB Type-C connector and standard has a lot more pins uh, versus USB 2.0. So this, for example, it has the traditional D plus D minus lanes to support USB 2.0 data lines. It also has four high-speed differential lanes which can uh, be used to send USB 3.0 data and also some media data in form of display port. It has you know, power line VBUS, which is capable of going up to 20 volt and 5 amps under power delivery. And it also has appropriate ground pins and a couple of configuration channel pins, popularly known as CC, CC pins. So it has uh, you know, quite a few more pins compared to the traditional USB connector that we know. And it's a lot faster too, right? Currently, the USB uh, 3.1 speeds are at 5 gig, which is a popular node. Next year, it's going to 10 gigabit per second, and I'm sure there'll be future scalability as we go forward. Okay, but when you're dealing with that much uh, input of data, you probably have to construct a system differently, right? Yes, and not only it's the speed of the data, but now you're also uh, including power and video along the same connector and cable. So it is uh, you know, a fairly involved system solution if you indeed want to send a high bitrate, uh, you know, five gigabit USB data, a display port video data, as well as want to charge your device up to 100 watts. So what are we looking at here? So um, I'll, I'll create here on the whiteboard a total system solution required to enable a USB Type-C connector in any system. So what I've drawn here is on the right, I have a USB Type-C connector. So let's say envision this as a USB Type-C connector. And I mentioned some of the key pins which are a part of the USB Type-C connector. So you have the VBUS pins, which is going to carry the voltage and current. You have the VCON pin, which is a connector voltage pin. You have the USB 2.0 data lanes. You have the USB 3.0 data lanes. And a couple of configuration channel pins, which are known as CC pins. And the 2.0 is because of backward compatibility? Yes, so you still want the Type-C connector to be used in systems and just support you know, traditional USB 2.0 speeds. Now on the left, I'm showing Envision a system chipset or a host controller, and then we'll build a system in between the two to enable the Type-C uh, connectivity. So the very first, let's start with the power aspect of USB Type-C. Um, and USB Type-C comes with uh, you know, an additional specification called USB power delivery, which is optional. So USB Type-C connector by itself can support up to 5 volt 3 amps or 15 watts. If you do support power delivery spec specification, then you can go up to 100 watt, which is at 20 volt 5 amps. And USB power delivery uses baseband signaling. So you need a dedicated physical layer device which can talk the electrical language as per the spec and talk to the other side or the CC pins. So very first thing we will need here is something called a USB PD5 device. So USB PD5 device, 5 means a physical layer device. 
Uh, and that, as I mentioned, is a simple, you know, a purely a physical layer device that is going to talk the baseband language over, uh, you know, the CC pins. Next thing we need here is a microcontroller or some sort of intelligence in our system which can take policy decisions about what power profiles to support, what voltage and what current to accept or provide to the other side. So we will need uh, an intelligent device, let's say it's an MCU device, which is going to have a USB PD capable and compliant firmware stack sitting on it, which is essentially going to be the policy manager. Uh, overlooking the whole system, especially in terms of uh, uh, you know, charging profiles and data. Can that be a um, anything like a processor or a graphics controller or any other device that that's a, a computing unit? Yes, it is basically um, you know as I said, an MC microcontroller or a processor that has you know some amount of flash and RAM and some horsepower within to run the the power delivery firmware on top of it. And the USB PD5 device and MCU can talk over uh, you know, the widely used I2C or SPI interface. The next thing we need to look at here is, uh, as I mentioned, the VBUS line can go up to 20 volt and 5 amps. So you definitely need some sort of port protection in terms of load switches. So as you would all be uh, knowing, load switches are basically power FETs and power switches with uh, uh, some of the safety features built in like over voltage protection, over current protection, reverse current protection as needed depending on your system requirement. So we'll add a block for load switches. So can this connector work off of a mobile device as well as a, a plug-in device? Absolutely. So the Type-C connector is designed to be on any uh, type of electronic device where we have seen a tradition, traditional USB type A connector. So this connector can be adopted on notebooks, desktops, uh, you know, any computing applications, mobile devices, portable devices, and in general, uh, potentially it can uh, uh, go into, you know, other industrial medical applications. Basically, any applications that had a US, traditional USB connector can potentially move on to the USB type C connector. So we just looked at the power aspect here, which is what you just covered. What about the data part? Sure. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, USB Type-C connector has a quite a few uh, number of pins on the connector. And also remember, it, it is flippable connector, so it is independent of the cable direction and the plug orientation. Hence, you can imagine you need some sort of crossbar switches or data switches depending on how the, the cable gets plugged in. Uh, the system chipset still needs to understand and connect the appropriate lanes to the appropriate pins on the connector irrespective of the plug orientation. So when it comes to USB 3.0, you need some sort of data switches in the path as well. So we'll add some data switches here. And depending on whether you are sending just USB 3.0 data or you are adding on DisplayPort data to support video as well, you can have a different complexity of data switches that will be required uh, in order to support data over the Type-C connector. Now for the USB 2.0 lanes for backward compatibility, uh, if you look at the USB Type-C connector, the D plus D minus lanes are right in the middle and on, on both the levels of the pins. So even if you flip it, essentially they remain at the same place and so you don't need any data switches in order to support USB 2.0. So the USB 2.0 lanes can go directly, uh, the USB 2.0 lanes will, can be driven directly from the chipset as before, but the USB 3.0 lanes will have to go through some sort of data switches in order to support the flippable aspect of the USB Type-C connector. Uh, also, when you're looking at USB 3.0 or USB 3.1 Gen 1, as it is associated with the USB Type-C spec, it is running at 5 gigabit per second. So at these high bandwidths, you need some sort of signal integrity solution in the path as well, because depending on the trace length, you can run into signal integrity issues. So we can also add a block for USB 3.0 D driver on the path here. So we may need a USB 3.0 or 3.1 re-driver 
uh, on the path. So as you can see, uh, we have a USB PD5 device for the power delivery aspect and MCU, which is a policy manager to support and drive the overall uh, working of the power delivery aspect and, and power negotiation. You need load switches for port protection. Uh, you also need data switches for USB 3.0 and DisplayPort switching and to support the flippable aspect of the Type-C connector. And you need a USB 3.0 or 3.1 read driver in the path to address the signal integrity concerns, which may be raised at five gigabit per second. One last thing, as always, for any connector you may need is some sort of ESD protection and filtering for your data and power lines. So we can put a, a block here for ESD protection. So this, in a sense, gives you a high-level overview of all the different blocks that may be required in order to adopt a USB Type-C connector onto any system. So how scalable is this compared to, say, the previous versions? Uh, great question. So as you can see here, uh, there are several blocks required that we just uh, uh, showed here to enable you know, a USB Type-C connector that can support up to 100 watt power delivery, that can support DisplayPort video, a USB 3.0 data, and a USB 2.0 data as well. Now, as you can imagine, not every system may require all these features or functionality. So depending on the system requirement, uh, this system is very scalable and you may not need to use some of the blocks. So for example, if you have uh, a legacy system that still uses USB 2.0 bandwidth and you do not need any USB 3.0 speeds in the system, then you may be then you may not need the use of data switches in the path because USB 2.0, as I mentioned, goes directly. Um, also, if you do not want to support 100 watt charging, then you, you may not need a complex USB PD5 and an MCU solution to do the power, power delivery contract negotiation because the USB Type-C connector by itself supports up to uh, 15 watts, you know, 5 volt 3 amps. So there could be a simpler solution in place of this PD5 uh, which can just detect uh, you know, CC logic, uh, detect the, the orientation of the plug that gets plugged in, and it becomes a much simpler solution. Also, the load switches required for the VBUS line may be different. If you are supporting up to 100 watt power delivery, then you may need load switches that can support up to 20 volt operational switching and are capable of switching 5 amps. While on the other hand, if you're only supporting up to 15 watts, you may need a 5 volt 2 amps or a 5 volt 3 amp type of load switches. So as you can see, each of these blocks can have different levels of complexity, or you may not even need to have some of these blocks, depending on your system requirement and feature set. When are we gonna start seeing this rolling out into the market? Um, this connector, uh, the USB Type-C connector is becoming extremely popular and you can already see some of the consumer devices coming out in the market uh, which supports USB Type-C port uh, for charging, uh, data path, and video. Ravi Shah, thanks for a great explanation of the new USB standard. Thank so you, Ed. It was great talking to you.